Hi guys, and welcome to this, the first of Kaplan's uh, review of the papers, I suppose you could call it, where we take um, a new story that's been prevalent in the last couple of months and we link it back to your exams, your syllabus, okay? Um, the first one we've chosen, uh, probably one of the, the uh, more interesting uh, ACCA exams as I see it, is P1. And with me to my right, I have Paul Kirkwood, who's a Kaplan tutor. Um, he's going to run us through a story that he's seen in the press that he thinks uh, particularly relevant to P1. So, Paul. Thanks, Stuart. Um, well, I don't think anyone who's been watching the TV or reading the newspapers in the last few months could have failed to notice the World Cup that's been right. taken, yeah, taking place in Brazil. I think I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, and I, th I think the, 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 the scenario of the World Cup or FIFA itself could be a wonderful case study for our ACCA P1 examiner. Okay. You know, as you know, yeah. he does take real life examples. He's very, very keen on a real life example, isn't he? That's right, and, and he brings them into, into either the case study, but even the 25 mark questions. And the, 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 the World Cup and FIFA itself, you could see he's got elements of corporate governance, elements of risk, internal control, and certainly ethical situations, mm -hmm. which the examiner could explore it, with, with a fictional case. Indeed. Um, I'll pull you back on something you just said there about corporate mm -hmm. governance. I mean, as far as I'm aware, corporate governance is only relevant to PLC. So how does that? How does FIFA come into that one then? Yeah, I mean, if we go back to what corporate governance actually means, you know, the definition, and it was in the Cadbury report back in 1992. Yeah, it was indeed. Uh, yeah, in the UK, Maxwell. Yeah, absolutely. In the UK, where they defined it as as the system by which companies or organ or businesses businesses are directed and controlled. Mm -hmm. Now. I mean, the, the clue's in the question, isn't it, with the idea of corporate governance? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so does it really only apply to businesses? Well, I don't think so, because the fundamental principles that underpin corporate governance are really are, are, are valid for all organisations, whether they be charities or sporting organisations. Yeah, and indeed, as I, as I understand it, that, that definition's been expanded since Cadbury uh, first wrote it, hasn't it, to now mm -hmm. include the term shareholder and stakeholder as well, hasn't it? So That's right. I think if you looked at an organisation like FIFA, I think mm -hmm. if we understood who FIFA's stakeholders were, then we'd be able to understand why corporate governance probably has more of a, a bit of a, a bit of a deeper meaning for them than initially we might think. Mm. I mean, FIFA, as, as you rightly uh, allude to, doesn't have shareholders, mm -hmm. but it does have a wide number of stakeholders. Yeah. And if we think back to its mission or its, its goal from its website, it says its goal is the constant improvement of football. And then we can think about, okay, well, who's going to be involved? Uh, who will FIFA uh, uh, touch? when it tries to achieve that mission. Well, you could think about the, the football players. And we could use Mendelo's matrix to actually assign each of the, the stakeholders to a particular quadrant. And if I was within FIFA, then I could use that to help determine a strategy to help achieve my goals whilst thinking of that individual stakeholder. Yeah, so as we said, we've got the, the, the players who may be actually individually low power, and maybe with regards to FIFA itself, perhaps a low interest. Mm -hmm. But then you'd have organisations such as the, the sponsors, who may be the key sponsors of the World Cup, who may have higher power, but, but possibly lower interest unless something happened which made them concerned about FIFA's activities. Okay. And of course, you, you can't think about football without thinking about the fans either, can you? Mm, yeah, well, I mean, again, think of Mendelos. The fans, they've got to be low power individually. Maybe collectively, they, they could have a bit more of a voice. Uh, have they got a, an, a high or low interest in FIFA itself? I'd probably argue a low interest as yeah, well. I think in, that's in, in the organisation, yeah. FIFA. Okay, so we've looked at the the sort of the stakeholders, the mm -hmm. different stakeholder groups that are there. We've used this this idea of Mendeley's matrix to assign mm -hmm. them. Of course, all of this works on the principle that in order to worry about something like this, there must be something wrong at the very heart of FIFA in order for us to be to be even thinking about this discussion. So, what, what's your take on that? Uh, and I don't think I would use the word "what's wrong at FIFA." I think that's a little bit uh, bit bit harsh in terms of FIFA is an incredibly successful organisation, you know, multi-billion-pound revenues. But there have been one or two recent examples where maybe some activities or allegations are at risk of damaging FIFA's reputation. Yeah. And if I go take that back to the fundamental principles of corporate governance. You know, some of those would be integrity, reputation, uh, accountability, responsibility. Course, these, these are all key terms that are defined in, in, um, in P1. These are all things Absolutely. that are very, very important to the P1 examiner, aren't they? Yeah, and we could take a couple of examples. I, I remember in the construction of the World Cup Stadia in Brazil, um, there was a number of accidents, a number of, number of fatalities. Now, I know that the construction industry is a, is a dangerous or can be a dangerous industry. I used to work in it. However, 
Do you think FIFA has a responsibility to protect the safety of the construction workers building those stadiums for the World Cup? Well, I think some of the more seen, the more sort of um, strategically important partners in FIFA may take that view, and certainly some That's of the right. sponsors may may think that FIFA have some sort of responsibility there. Yeah, um, and I think that, that again brings in the idea of the stakeholders, Mendelo's matrix. You really want to be keeping those those key players happy, don't you? Well, that's right, and 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 ultimately. <coughs> Excuse me. Ultimately, it will be the stakeholders who will hold uh, FIFA accountable. And again, another one of those fundamental concepts. Yeah. And this, I can take that a little bit further. Um, it reminds me of the 2022 World Cup bid oh, processing. Yeah, the, the, the bid of Qatar, yeah. That's right. And there's been several allegations of, of uh, maybe lavish gifts or entertaining uh, being levied on the people who are making the decision. Now, those are just allegations, and I know Qatar as a, as a state is, is, is fundamentally denying any, any of those allegations. That's our FIFA, yeah. That's our FIFA. But there are investigations underway. And if the reputation of FIFA is damaged, or if its integrity is brought into doubt, then that could damage the relationships with its sponsors. It could damage the commercial success of FIFA. Indeed. So corporate governance is incredibly important. Too. Absolutely. Brilliant. OK, what about risk then? I mean, we've talked about... Um we talked about corporate governance. Now, obviously, the mm. examiner takes the view that you know you, you've got these four, these four syllabus areas. You've mm -hmm. got um, corporate governance, risk, control, ethics. Mm. Um, now, I know the examiner tends to view them all as one large subject, and I think we, we all should view them as one large right. subject. I think um, we need to think about all of those different areas as part of corporate governance. Well, that's right. So, so what <coughs> sort of risks are FIFA open to then if these sort of allegations are? are are found to be true. Well, I mean, taking some of the key risk areas, we, we've alluded to some of them. Reputational risk, uh, financial risk, if sponsors decide to, to, to change the terms of the agreements or even pull out. However, the, 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 the appeal of football around the world means if one sponsor does pull out, there's quite likely to be able to find so possibly another... possibly quite a low risk? You, you may be quite, I, maybe you could assess that as, as relatively low compared to other uh, organisations and other bodies. Yeah, and I know FIFA have been very, very vocal on the controls they've been putting in place, aren't they? Yeah. Haven't they? They've, on their website, they've alluded to an awful lot of changes that they've made recently, and maybe you mm. could elaborate on some of those for us as well. Yeah, it, 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 if, as I look at the, the FIFA website and read their annual report, it, as, a, as a fan, first and foremost, it actually gives me a bit of confidence that they are putting procedures and processes and controls in place to manage some of these key risks. They've now got a governance committee, and they've set up four tasks for, task for Forces, including an ethics task force to try and make sure that they are transparent and that they've got robust controls in place to manage these risks. Yeah. It, it is, it's quite, it, it's, as I say, as a, as a fan first and foremost, I, I do feel quite comforted that they are putting procedures in place that deal with the issues that, that are, are arising. Mm -hmm. And I think what we can probably do is we can probably draw parallels back to the types of committees you see in the corporate governance syllabus, things like mm -hmm. the remuneration committee, certainly the audit committee would yes. be one if we're talking about risk and maybe ethics. You can. You, you can always also go back to parallels to other organisations. Um, oh, Salt Lake City. Um, of the Olympics. The, the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, they were, there was a massive amount of allegations regarding bribery or lavish entertaining with, uh, with regard to that bid process. And coming out of that, I, I'm, I'm sure there were an, a number of IOC, so International Olymp Olympic Committee, yeah. members who were expelled and the bidding process rules were changed. And it were changed quite dramatically, weren't they? Yeah. As I recall. That's, that, that's right. I, again, I don't know the specifics of, of the changes, but uh, there were some, some major changes to the way that the Olympics were going to be awarded. Okay, excellent. And then finally, then just with just regards to the the sort of the fourth quadrant of the of the syllabus, mm -hmm. if you like, uh, ethics. I mean, ethics is quite often an area where students don't particularly like to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Ethics is obviously the optional twenty five marker at the end. Yes. And I think sometimes students don't really have as good a grasp of ethics, mm -hmm. and certainly some of the ethical models that maybe mm -hmm. they should do. Um, what do you feel in with regards to to FIFA and ethics? I mean. From my own personal perspective, you've got to look at it from um, a relativistic point of view mm -hmm. and say that you know FIFA are probably open to many, many different pressures commercially and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, so, so maybe think about um, there is no one single right answer. If you, if you were to take Qatar, for an example, mm -hmm. there is no single reason why Qatar were awarded, um, were awarded the bid, were well, awarded right. the, the World Cup in 2022. Yeah, I mean, ethics is a, it, it's, it's my favourite area of the Indeed, syllabus. I think it's most of our uh, favourite areas. Absolutely, but, but we've, got to, we've got to just got to be careful 
because it's very easy to get drawn in and give personal views. Yes, here. it is very careful. Um, with, with with ethical the I mean, there's a number a number of areas of the ethics syllabus that the examiner could explore, from the theories to maybe ethical behaviour to Gray Owen and Adams linking into 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 stakeholder uh, analysis. Yeah, uh, and stakeholder theory, but. Uh, I mean, I, I come back, what would drive the ethics of FIFA? Uh, so similar to a corporation, I think maybe the ethical, ethical codes and ethical moral conduct will be driven from the top, you know, from those governing bodies of FIFA will be, uh, uh, so their actions and their behaviours will maybe drive the, the actions of FIFA as a, mm -hmm. as a whole organisation. Now you mentioned the model there, didn't you? You mentioned the model mm -hmm. of Gray Owen Adams, which mm -hmm. is this seven positions on, um, on, on well, organisational behaviour, isn't it, mm -hmm. effectively? Um, now I know a lot of students struggle with that model because mm -hmm. they kind of they don't they don't see beyond the first four. And it's very very easy to see the first four because that's where we sort of mm -hmm. we look at most organisations in terms of corporations existing. Yes. But with an organisation like FIFA, you've got to look beyond those first four steps, haven't you? Maybe mm -hmm. start thinking about maybe FIFA as a socialist, or I know you have a different viewpoint on that one, and that's yeah. the, that's the beauty of the model, isn't it? Yeah. I I, I mean this really is my opinion because I think you can argue. FIFA could fit in a number of positions. Uh, I would go for for perhaps a radical feminist, because I think with the aim of FIFA uh, to to expand, you know, football for everybody, I think that inclusivity is very much a feminine value mm -hmm. rather than a masculine value. And some of their other campaigns, like the the, the Let's Kick Raci Racism a out very of football important campaign, indeed, yeah. is 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 looking at inclusivity. It's looking at trying to bring people together. It's to to the the extent of not excluding others. I feel they're more feminine values, so I put them at position six, radical Excellent. feminist. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for that, Paul. Very interesting to hear your views. Um, as we've said, P1, very, very uh, real paper. The examiner is very, very keen for you guys to understand that P1 is not just a theoretical paper, it links back to real life scenarios as well. So I'd like to thank Paul for coming along uh, today to help us out. Um, and thank you very much.